Hey guys, welcome back to uh, day 15 of the 30-day D&D challenge. As always, I'm Dave. Uh, so today we are doing your favorite undead. Well, I'm going to do this two ways. The first thing I'm going to talk about is actually the first, my favorite undead uh, NPC that I made. And then I'm going to do my actual favorite undead monster. Because they happen to be two completely different things. So, the favorite NPC that I did that was undead was actually a vampire king named Meyer. Now, I know you're thinking, okay, great, here we go again. You know, vampire king, whoop the effing do, trying to turn everybody evil. Okay, so, I went a whole other route with this. The guy's name was Meyer. Now, he was the king of a vast city that I named Basis. And um, his backstory was, I apologize, I had an uh, interruption, so there's going to be a jump there. But, uh, so he was the vampire king of this vast city of Macis. And his backstory was that uh, he and this dwarf actually made their own city. Um, you know, they were outcasts, I forgot exactly how that works. But they were outcasts or whatever, and they made their own city. So, dwarves tend to live longer than humans. The humans getting old, the uh, the dwarf was well up in his years, and the dwarf is getting ready to die, and they're thinking, well, what are we going to do about the city? You know, um, we can't just leave this to a successor, because what's going to happen is the whole thing is going to just fall apart from our vision. And their vision was a generally benevolent city, um, good trade, well defended, that kind of thing. But not really too land hungry. And uh, the human, Meyer, decided what he's going to do is he's going to work on something to prolong his life. Not necessarily immortality, but definitely something where he'd live a little bit longer so he could really see it through. <sighs> well, the experiment went bad. So Meyer starts working on this uh, uh, experiment to prolong his life, and things unfortunately go south. What happens is, is ultimately, he winds up actually turning himself into a vampire. Well, you'd expect this is where everything goes tragic, and he goes dull Dracula on everybody, and he's just evil. And what happens is he actually manages to hold it together. He actually doesn't switch his alignment over to the evil. Um, he actually remains relatively lawful good, but he's a little bit more adamant about it now. Um, in addition, he actually creates a new penal system that revolves around it so he can actually survive and feed and everything else. So, uh, what happens is he also sleeps in an alternate dimension, so that helps protect him. It's a whole thing. And the funny thing is, is that everybody knows he's a vampire. It's, there's no hiding it. It's sort of the kind of Doctor Doom element of everybody knows Doctor Doom is, you know, this kind of a tyrant in, in, a, in a metal suit and everything else, but he protects his own. He oppresses his own, but he protects his own. Meyer, on the other hand, protects his own, but isn't really oppressing them. You can come and go as much as you please, you can leave, you can come, whatever you want to. He has laws about, you know, whether or not weapons are allowed in the city, which actually turned out to be the crux of the actual, uh, their actual encounter between him and the players. The players went to there, went to Macis, and encounter him because they're, they had to uh, return a priest who was uh, abducted by orcs in a previous adventure. And they're like, oh, well, we can't do our festival without him. We need him. Okay, well, we found him. We're going to return him. It'll all be great. Um, it turns out that while they're there, um, they actually uh, witness in the Coliseum that uh, you know some criminals had snuck weapons in, committed murder, and everything else in it. And you know they're like, well, what, what's going to happen to this? And they go through the whole trial process. Like they actually sit in on this, and all the citizens are like, listen, you know, kill them, you know, spare them, everything else. And ultimately, um, Meyer is sitting there with his counsel, and he's like, okay, well, what do you guys want to do? And they're like, he needs to be put to death. And he's like, oh, okay, great, fine. So he goes down there, and the, the death penalty there is he drains you. 
So he goes down there and he drains them out. And he goes, okay, by the way, now I'm going to, instead of you know, turning you into one of my thrall, I'm going to turn you into this mindless husk. And you're just going to go and you're going to live in the sewer and you're going to wind up feeding for the rest of your days until you die or whatever, decompose on rats and everything else that happens to be down there. Basically, he turns them into this like, really mindless ghoul, I guess is the best way to kind of say it. So... You know, he puts them down there, and ultimately from there, um, there's actually a bunch of sewer uh, adventures because what's a D and D game without winding up in the sewer at least once? Where here's the thing: they're not down there to clear things out or make treasure or anything else. It's actually a case of they're down there to repair cracks and guard the repair crew because the repair crew is like, well, we've been getting reports of, of creatures in there. And they're like, well, oh, okay, well, it's going to be the undead moving around there. Well, the undead are in a different part of the sewer. Oh, and it's sealed off. Okay. Um, so it's down there. Oh, well, you know, we get alligators and we get sturges and shit like that. It starts living down there. So we need to clear them out. So that's what the, uh, the party's there for. They're like, oh, well, you know, you're better than the city guard. We're going to send you down there and you'll, you'll take care of that. Um, so they get to use um, wands of mending to repair the cracks in the, uh, in the, uh, surfaces of the sewer uh while they're down there that's when the next plot point hit which was um thieves and paladins were actually sneaking weapons in through the sewer system into the city so that they could actually try to purge the city as they saw it as being evil of meyer and his uh his troops and everything else it was a very interesting concept in a very interesting game overall uh, I enjoyed it greatly so that is my favorite undead NPC now my favorite undead is actually the Dracolich um, I'm not really sure why I've just really thought that the idea of this fully sentient lich that happens to be a dragon was completely badass so for me that's been my favorite my favorite undead um, A lot of possibilities, a lot of story elements that can go in there, and they're really rare. So it's a case of if you're going to use one, it's you're going to need to use it for a good reason. So um, for me, that, that that was kind of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I realize this one's longer and it's going to be a little disjointed uh, because of problems with the animal, but uh, hope you overall you guys enjoyed it. So this will be Dave uh, for Gamers on Games uh, talking about my favorite undead, and we will see you guys tomorrow for our next episode. Signing out. Gamers on Games is sponsored in part by and by viewers like you.